So after the first and original Planet of the Apes film, four other sequels were released within a year after the first one. You've got Beneath, Escape, Conquest, and Battle of the Planet of the Apes. And I want to see how consistent or how garbage it will go downhill because with these films coming out a year apart, there's just going to be some convoluted thing or just something. I don't know how you make- I mean granted, this is the 70s. Making movies back were probably time-wise a lot more easier than now, but even so, putting out a movie a year for four years straight can be easy. I'm going to assume behind the scenes stuff producers and writer stuff they had me pumping out ideas left and right just be like all right just do that 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 so i'll start with the first one beneath of the planet of the apes a planet where apes evolved from men it's got to be an answer damn you hold it So there's a recap immediately starting this movie, which isn't a good sign. The runtime is like an hour 36-ish minutes, around the 90 minute mark. And with the recap start, they're just filling a runtime. I was like, okay, great. This is not a good sign at all. This is a sign of like, we're gonna pump out this for the sake of pumping it out because it made money, the first one did. And one thing I noticed immediately is budget drop. Like there is some VFX shots in this movie, specifically with Taylor and his girl. But the whole fire effects come in, the lightning comes in, not good. It was awful. I was already not off to a great start. And then he falls into like a green screen screen and then just disappeared it was awful what is this movie i was worried immediately the flashback as well because the girl doesn't speak any english not off to a great start but this sequel the big glaring issue in this sequel is the fact that it is a repeat kind of of the first one with some new elements so we get introduced to a new character named brent he comes onto a spaceship he knows taylor because the ship shaped like the same his partner dies but then the lady on the horse comes in he asks her about taylor he sees like the name tag and then he takes her into like the ape village and all over done again realizes that he's on another planet or just on earth he realized it doesn't matter because we know that it's earth but he gets whole shock the two apes that helped taylor and this human girl in the first movie they come back give them apples and food and water the old ape guy the nurse guy he comes in as well talking about i don't know getting get rid of the human race and that's what i thought of when i was watching this movie because it is sort of the same thing just from a different perspective and there's no more trick the trick was this was earth the planet he was on there's none of that no more so when you have that revealed it's kind of like okay what's what's left so it feels like meandering stuff re-meeting that one girl on the whole horse whose names i forgot and the apes names i completely forgot as well so forgive me for that but they're nice they believe in humanity not like the other apes where humanity's like you know destroy humanity and whatnot the middle chunk i almost fell asleep or at least i think i did i don't know because i'll again what another one of those movies that i decided to watch at night but i think i may have fell asleep at one part but immediately woke back up because it was a bit meandering kind of like man that thing's really happening like things are happening but it's still like the status quo it goes back to like the status quo where apes are still in control humans are helpless you know it's like okay whatever meandering stuff and then another aspect or i guess addition they add on to this movie are mutated people or people that have telepathic abilities this came out of nowhere it seems like in the writer's room they came up with this out of their asses because this okay it kind of i don't know does it make sense have mutated people being burnt by the nuclear explosions and nuke being transformed into mutated people and having these abilities is a cool idea but like they're underground and they have these human sculptural things saint Deidre stuff when brett goes on the ground but it's like i don't i don't really know about this because it's just weird like i think it's out of the realm or possibility that there will be mutated people or human survivors but having them specifically mutated it just kind of throws me off a bit i'm like all right let's see where this goes and it turns out they're just as bad as apes they okay maybe not but all i remember is that man they're mutated and they don't they want to take back earth and that's about it honestly or it's something else but i like completely forgot but they have their own agenda just like the apes where they want to take control and the planet back to them you have these two groups right the apes who want all the control and can talk and still look good like just in terms of the looks of the apes still look good and i'm gonna assume that that's gonna be consistent throughout these sequels because i'm assuming it's gonna be a lot more easier to put on prosthetic stuff and like these mutated people they have their own agendas and then the human the one human brent and this girl is stuck in the middle of all of this same thing with the two helping apes and so when you have that it could be interesting but it's just all kind of fine it's okay it did kind of feel like the whole reveal of the mutated people was kind of like this big grand reveal it seems like and it did feel that way but it was more like what again kind of weird and then there's also a certain point where apes are following brett and this one girl somehow it takes them all the way down to the underground which they never found again because they never found this clearly this wasn't planned came out of nowhere and then they have like this big fight mutants versus apes and then there's like an explosion by caused by the nurse or something apparently this big explosion there's this big ass explosion caused a white flag there's a narrator narrating and then that's how the movie ends and it's like okay super glaring to me is the budget drop obviously all the visual effect like near the beginning with taylor what the heck and then 
then oh yeah one aspect i forgot taylor comes back by the end as well he's like being controlled by the mutated people he was apparently that green screen hole that was really bad was created by these mutated people he's being controlled by them fighting brent but then they come back on the same side and then both of them die they get shot so again there's like no attachment to these characters whatsoever and i think the interesting part are the apes but because we have to focus so much on brent and taylor how to find taylor where he is and then introduce these new like mutated people that have telepath powers it's kind of all over the place in a way and so when they die there's no emotional weight whatsoever kind of the out of nowhere mutant kind of introduction the apes feeling the same which is fine and then the two apes helping that was a nice touch because of continuity very clear they just kind of scramble things up because this movie came out two years after the first one it's like okay within that two years it's like well i don't know if you're gonna make a sequel in a franchise out of this could have thought of something better than doing a rinse or repeat of the first one or at least i felt like because stuck in the desert a lot of following a lot of looking i don't know just from a different perspective of a new astronaut or person having to relive and retread a lot of the same things that were happening with the first one just without that trick pulling the rug out from everyone being like hey surprise each can talk this is earth but i guess if there's one thing i will remember about this movie it is taylor and those vfx green screen shots because man they look fantastic so beneath the planet of the apes overall the second entry of this franchise it's okay it's fine again retreads of like the first movie there's no clear direction introducing these other group of people another group with their own agenda seems kind of like a misfire to me should have been focused on apes more about the apes and maybe this newcomer that experienced the same thing that taylor did but also looking for taylor having the humans be heavily involved i think that's a huge misstep so movies are okay this is dr zero her loving husband cornelius and little milo welcome gentlemen to the united the escape from the planet of the apes and then one year later escape from the planet of the ape was released and so this one starts off pretty weird again but also awesome we're back in the 20th century it is in the year 3955 i think it's like way past in the future there's a ship landing a bunch of u.s army they come to salute them and then when these people or astronauts take off their helmet it is the apes the two apes that were helping in aiding the humans and the first two and then another one that i don't recognize that i probably forgot about but it is an effective opening kind of bring you right back into the franchise but then having a new change of pace and scenery of the apes roles reversing but these apes are actually good apes they're not hateful apes at all or they don't want to terrorize humans it seems like these two they want to help humanity in a way but in their timeline because this movie does deviate from the original timeline of what happens in the first movie big theme is fear fear of humans and fear of these apes taking over and taking control because very early on soldiers fear these apes put them in cages and whatnot even though they shouldn't be in cages other animals and like the los angeles zoo and so even like the whole union stuff and all that argument and stuff whenever these two apes reveal that apes take over in the future before that point you know they're starting to be willing to talk all the three apes early on like we should have talked but then one dies because of a gorilla attack which is weird in the cage itself but then they reveal the whole world and the union like hey we do talk in the future we do have tech we do take over the world and with that said it creates this fear this immediate fear and just kind of paranoia within humans these people in the higher ups that are in power that are making these executive decisions being like okay we know our fate in the future or supposedly they don't believe them yet but they're like let's test out this hypothesis this theory that apes will take over and we are the cause of it and this movie they change that immediately it's like you know what we're not gonna allow that to happen because you know we're humans and whatnot and most of them okay maybe not most of them but some of them they don't think these apes are telling the truth because skepticism which makes sense these higher ups aren't just being evil for the sake of being evil it does make sense for them to be very cautious and very not trustworthy of these apes because they're an unknown species in terms of talking apes there's animals and there's apes talking but in the past this isn't a thing which is why when Whenever these apes talk, again, their names are rather kind of names, but whenever they do talk, it's like big Mo might be like, nope, this is gonna go wrong because the government or whoever is in power is gonna use this to their advantage and use it against them. And they do sort of. They think they're not telling the whole truth, which they, I guess they kind of aren't, but they are being truthful on what, like, they're saying that apes will take over. Apes are the ones that are talking, not humans. It's the polar opposite of the 20th century and way back in the future. And because things are so different way back in the past, these apes now have to experience what their apes did to humans in the future. They get to experience what it feels like to be enslaved to be in cages and to experience the whole thing even though they're nice apes they didn't really do it they were just kind of bystanders and outsiders they feel the mistreatment from other humans or they look at them differently they don't treat them well to a certain point because there's a certain point where they're like hey let's just treat these apes very nicely they're in a cage in the beginning a lot and just like in the two previous films there are humans that want to help these apes and there's these two doctors that know them immediately because they talk to them and they help them just like they did in the two previous entries i kind of like mirroring 
what's going on kind of the same thing because this film was made a year apart it's as if they you know let's just be used that asset of like the others helping other species helping just reverse the roles and this is what you get so i didn't mind that they were actually trying to help them but then a certain point happens where they're being treated like celebrities they're being celebrated they're wearing these nice clothes they're having suits on it's it's fun to watch this movie is a lot more fun than the previous one different era different perspective the roles are being reversed they don't deserve it but because of them being different species even though they're not which is like the funny thing because i guess humans are called like careless apes as well and so the fact that they can't find like a common ground and like just be like hey let's work together and peace together it's kind of funny to me he is like kind of like the same species one just has a lot more hair and one doesn't they're living the life everybody knows about them the news are broadcasting them about how these apes are very powerful they can talk and whatnot but obviously that won't last for long because fear fear of the government and the higher ups being like we know our fear let's change that and what do they do they want to kill these apes and that you know it, it is like a kind of like a media like kill them but it's like oh okay like i expected this but not this fast that would have been this kind of organic thing but because of the runtime be only around the 90 minute mark this would be expected you know government turns on them they don't believe the whole truth they think they're not telling the truth because the fear is ingrained in them now it makes sense from their perspective because of what the apes told them and seemingly the only thing that they believe the humans believe is the whole ape take it over the film doesn't say this but i was gonna assume this again like kind of theory-ish but like i'm gonna assume that they believe the whole apes take it over and that's all they heard everything else from the downfall of humanity was themselves they probably don't believe that because again who would really believe that within the context of this movie they're like nah we did not do this you apes are ridiculous you're not telling the truth you guys are just apes you know it's kind of that attitude kind of that tone of being like you guys aren't better than us we are better than you kind of that offish kind of mentality so that's probably what led to their decision to be like get rid of these apes yeah they're celebrities they can talk they're celebrities but just get rid of them because they're gonna take over the world in like 2000 years or so but before that apes i, I need to you know i'm gonna look up their names hold on the apes are cornelis and zero okay there we go i went that whole first section of beneath i said the apes anyways these two have a kid named caesar they name him caesar and again like the whole mutated people in beneath this kid came out of nowhere it was just like let's just introduce this cuz we need to have a sequel a year later so let's just introduce this kid because why not it's like kind of eyebrow raising me like what okay i guess he's gonna be like the main star the main protagonist of the next movie and like they give him to like the zookeeper it keeps him in a cage as well so that we can have that last end credit scenes of him saying mama and dada and so they're on a hunt they're on like the most wanted list the two nurses they help him but that really won't matter because they're found on this abandoned boat that ship both of the game shot granted this is a very it's not a great kind of shootout thing or sequence they get shot they fall down the fall look decent and then zero she throws the baby down in the water no one sees this by the way don't know how anyone didn't see that but they didn't which is fine and then zero lays on top of their husband dying at the same time as both apes die in this helicopter shot thing and this boat and so it ends in a tragic way where both the apes die but their legacy their son will live on and hopefully take over the world in the next two films so escape was a lot better i enjoyed it way more than beneath it wasn't born it was interesting like i said earlier it's just really entertaining throughout being celebrities the change of pace and scenery fear within the government and the higher up them telling the truth and not the truth but also having resentment towards humans and how things work in the past and future and the humans trying to help them but all that would not matter because by the end tragedy hits but their legacy will live on to tell the tale and story so i like escape a lot more i think it's a good movie it's a fun good movie a fun entry not amazing or anything i think i might i may like it more than the first one because the first one had like 20 minutes of walking meandering everything is good about the first one but what makes it elevated is that ending and that twist but this one was just consistent and good entertaining throughout so yeah escape from the planet of the apes is a good film it is a good entry the biggest the newest the most exciting of all the planet of the apes pictures <laughs> And then another year later, a new apes movie came out, Conquest of the Planet of the Apes, where we follow their son, their legacy, Caesar, into his like adult life, I think, right? Yeah, I'm gonna say adult life. I don't know why I thought of like teenager Caesar, but no, that's not the case. He looks grown, and this entry dives into the whole slave sort of aspect where apes are now known in the world, not in a far too distant future, but I guess time trip ahead, apes are now known as pets. None of them talk except for Caesar because he's the one, the legacy, the one that will step up and rebel, but humans are not using them as pets, treating them like like garbage some of them the zookeeper with caesar he's shooting him nicely and then throughout the whole film caesar finds out that not every human it's not like the zookeeper or this new character named mcdonald you know they're nice they don't want to do this but it is the job they're just kind of be like all right come on ape. stuff like that caesar finds out you know what most of humanity sucks throughout the film he gets angry seeing apes be treated horribly beaten beaten he's like you know what it's time to step up rebel against humanity seeing everything the mystery means and whatnot and so mcdonald and like the zookeeper they're like the little speck of saving grace of humanity that, that caesar sees but from his own perspective 
respect to being enslaved by a human and be talked down to and he understands everything as well he's just like you know what for humanity it needs to be taken down except for the you know maybe few a hundred that are nice i could definitely see the resemblance to like the real world implications of it because i've actually done some research on this movie but it is very like kind of not on the i guess it is on a nose of like you know brutality and actual slavery that happened and it is around that realm it's not really heavy handed it, like they don't say well i guess there's one line from mcdonald he was like came from slavery as well but aside from that you know it doesn't seem very heavy handed it's his own thing they're using real world aspects just in the world of fiction again i partially done some research when this movie came out maybe there was some controversy back in 1972 or 3 but i'm assuming back in the 70s maybe it was less i don't know but it is interesting you know yeah i partially should have done some research probably. but i do find that this movie is a bit meandering in the beginning where i get the whole plot is about the enslavement of apes and that is the whole plot essentially there is really nothing else like you just see the perspective from caesar and maybe some other things and this one kind of fell like beneath but just a little bit better where it wasn't retread but it was just a lot of the same thing happening over and over again the ape being kind of being mistreated seeing the anger from caesar seeing the human the two human mcdonald and the zookeeper being the saving grace and saving hope a speck of you know good humanity even though it won't help by the end of the movie they do that kind of over and over again for like i don't know what feels like the most of the movie it's not until like they rebel like he tell he like looks at the apes like he literally looks at the apes be like rebel and then they rebel which is kind of funny it's supposed to be the serious moment and it is but it's just like he looks at them like do it rebel i don't know i just thought it was, i just thought that was kind of funny and then this mcdonald character or mcdonald with the a but it's mcdonald mcdonald either way i guess he is there to be like the different perspective of a person that comes from slavery because slavery is happening to these apes in this world and so by the end he does tell him that you know you can learn to forgive humanity human you know he's the perfect example of that slavery happened to him or maybe his people and he's learned to forgive them find a middle ground a peace within his people and everyone else he's that you know perspective that point of view but by the end of the movie caesar can't go back on that he's just like you know what no going back he's fighting fire over fire it's been mistreated for so long granted i don't know timeline wise i don't know i'm assuming this started after his parents died by the end escape so from that point until this point which is like i don't know 20 30 years somewhere around there who knows it's probably like decade of this so it feels like a really short amount of time because of one year after escape but in fiction world time it's a long time so it makes sense for him to be like there's no going back the mistreatment of him and everyone else it makes sense and so then rebel happens right caesar starts his rebel against humanity again the looks hilarious and then we get to a point where cops versus apes the apes obviously outbeat them because strength wise and physical wise way stronger that's like god damn that's scary like i would not want to go up against goddamn apes they should be relatively stronger than a human because physically they are different and then they start stabbing them with like a bunch of sticks and guns you know blood not bloody bloody but there is blood it's like okay this is a decent scene this is cool the rebellion violence on violent stuff and then caesar gives that pretty damn good speech mcdonald's standing there kind of like being that hopeful finding a better ground peace person but in this ending of the movie caesar's like no violence will change this world that they're in they will take over because violence will change everything and then going back to mcdonald violence won't change a thing if violence will add on to violence and other violence which would come true later on in the supposedly final chapter his speech does go on for a bit maybe too long but it doesn't matter it is a good speech and rebellion against humanity and just standing up for themselves and it would hopefully be a big war for the next movie but i don't think that's going to be the case especially with the budget because i don't know what the budget is but i have to assume it's got to be low because beneath if that's the same budget for these next three movies or three sequels that's a guarantee not gonna have this big battle because they just don't have the money or nor the budget like even the first movie you know not there's not a lot of visual effects it's just a lot of like you know what's going on it's like a mystery a mystery movie and so these later sequels they're not gonna have that big battle and so it seems like this ending's gonna set up a big battle between apes versus humanity and that's probably not gonna happen because of budget and time again when you're to do this it's kind of crazy and ridiculous nowadays so conquest i do like this movie i don't like it as much as escape mainly because i don't want to watch a movie about the mistreatment of ape while this is good for storytelling i don't necessarily want to watch a movie about the mistreatment of apes you know like all the time just in terms of rewatchability i would rewatch escape the beneath or this one because there's a lot more fun a lot more nuances to it new perspective this also has the same perspective stuff going more to the slave aspect being enslaved by humans what humans can do and how so maybe a few are good but from caesar's point of view humanity needs to be taken down the has been going on for i'm assuming decades like in timeline wise i don't pay attention to that stuff because it's just like you know what i'll figure it out later on i probably should have figured it out right now i probably should look up the reception of this movie back in 72 or something like that because i am interested to see the reception way back in the day but following caesar made sense for what they set up in the previous film his journey and his final decision by the end makes sense based off of what he's seen and the little good of what he's seen in humanity by mcdonald and his zookeeper so conquest of the planet of the apes overall is good like it's decent i like it but i would not rewatch it because it's just not as entertaining as escape now 
the final chapter in the incredible ape saga. And then the final chapter, supposedly the final chapter, comes out one year later. And anytime there's a final chapter on like a movie or a poster, you know damn well it's not a final chapter. Friday the 13th, the final chapter. Jason Goes to Hell, the final chapter. Freddy Z, the final nightmare, or something like that. Like, that's a lie. There's like two more reimagines and slash remakes for this one, so it's definitely not. So this one is called Battle. Now, it feels like based off the title, filmmakers and people behind the scenes wanted people to think that this would be like big final battle between humans and apes. As I said, and the conquest section i don't think that is mainly because of budget and time it's just not gonna happen and it didn't happen so i wasn't expecting like a big battle what this film brought was three different sort of perspectives and mentalities of how to deal with the peace between humanity and apes because this movie immediately undoes the whole speech that caesar gave the end of conquest and this movie he's like you know what let's work with human beings and try to find a peace with each other and it's like oh wait a minute what that whole good speech you know in the last one that's not gonna happen that did suck i was like god damn it i didn't get that you know like, you know what Whatever. So we have Caesar's kind of mentality of finding peace human and ape. We have his general Aldo who has a mentality of just all apes and kill humanity. And then we have the humanity mentality of just getting all apes. So we have three different mentalities in this movie kind of factions and just kind of clashing together. And Aldo part, while it's necessary to have Caesar truly find the peace between both species and kind, I think it was unneeded. I think you could have done that without, I don't know. Actually, you know what? I actually don't know because I don't know how else they could have done it without, you know, adding yet another sort of faction into it because it would have been the same thing for like horror movies straight humanities versus eight and they know for a fact they don't have budget to have this big battle so it's like okay what else do we do just add in a, this whole other kind of mentality of being like you know what kill all and while aldo's mentality wasn't that it was killing all humanity he does kill an ape caesar's son and so that bridges the line crosses the line over according to caesar being like you know what both apes and humans are just as bad so instead of just fighting each other let's just find peace that's how it should be the movie does open up in like a cool little recap of all the films because again the final chapter cool it was also a reminder of beneath I was like oh no a recap have runtime you know goddamn and then we get narrated by an older ape and i was like wait a minute is this like a sketch it opens kind of weirdly had me worried of being like oh no this is not this is not what i expected you know it's just kind of crazy but no it goes into the whole humans working with apes apes are helping also kind of treating horribly but they're working together mcdonald's back and i guess he is like kind of that bridge and gap being like hey caesar you are the leader find that piece and he's there for that specifically you've got like a human teacher teaching apes how to read and write so that they can learn to emote and just talk in general and so while this is all cool and you know interesting it's like okay what is the conflict in this and it's mainly general aldo he doesn't want to go to class he has a distinct hate for human beings and he always wants to rebel and that becomes an issue for not only himself but for humanity and caesar because he's reckless he almost kills him during a horse ride and then mcdonald has to like save him he almost kills their leader so he's super reckless and he's like the main to me like the main bad thing big bad because he's reckless and he's not really on either side he is on his side he wants to set up his own faction but because of the rules that were set by caesar he needs to follow them but he also doesn't want to so he's truly on his own side he doesn't really care despite him saying he is doing this for apes he cares about himself essentially he kills one of their kind there's also this plot thread where he wants to talk where caesar wants to talk to his parents and then mcdonald's like you know what let's go back to the place where humanity is at and they definitely have guns they get drives or whatnot that he can talk to his parents and then when they show that tape it's just images it's not that great probably couldn't get the actor back to just do the same thing or they could have used like some scenes from the previous movies but they didn't want to do that for some weird reason but it was just this weird image talking and it's his father or whatnot okay whatever while that's all going on humanity is still he being humanity you know just being like you know these damn apes while that's happening as well general aldo is like you know what just, he's like really one dimensional but he's needed in a way because again if it was just the tenuous apes versus humans this movie would have been boring so i'm assuming the writer were probably like, we need an athlete else so let's have someone within you know the apes rebel and play their own side and show the fact that you know all apes and humans are bad let's just find peace within one another and just take out bad seeds that's what he's really there for I'm not like expecting a lot for him but it's more like man this is they're really playing this out as well so it's like hey whatever this movie is really expected not like the big battle what's to be expected is that violence on violence will not work as we find out last you know movie and then going to this movie clearly it didn't work so they need to fight peace however the one guy this one last mole this one cockroach just one rat that just likes to ruin stuff and he ruins it and it causes a domino effect to create you know peace essentially I will say though that scene where they're at the humanity like ship place where they're on like the sides and they're 
they're all like on top. It was so obvious that they were on top, but for some reason, Caesar, McDonald, and Ape Friend didn't see that for some weird reason. I just thought that was funny. And then it gets to a point where they have humans captured, including McDonald. They have to make a decision. All those sat on, you know, just getting rid of all these humans. Caesar's still kind of conflicted and be like, well, should we save them, keep them as slaves, or just get rid of them? And then it's not until the older or eldest ape is like, guess what? This guy, Aldo, killed our kind. He killed Caesar's son. And so with this reveal, it is very clear to Caesar that apes are no different from humans as well. So it caused to make peace and be equals and be treated as equal. What happens after this is quite funny, kind of kind of bad. I won't lie, it be like Caesar chasing up Aldo up this tree really slowly, by the way. It's like has this intense music, but it's like, it's slow though. It, it's not intense at all. It took me out of the film. Like, all right, this is supposed to be intense, but it's really not, but I'll play along with it. And then like he falls off a tree. Caesar doesn't really do anything. He just kind of like tug each other and he falls off to his death and one more of their kind is dead. They release the human, they find peace, they're able to do it. And then we go back into this weird narrator guy. 600 years later, where he's reading it, telling the story about Caesar, a bunch of human kids and ape kids are together playing around with each other or just sitting next to each other and setting a feature that looks bright. Both human and apes are treated equally could be with each other. It ends with the statue of Caesar as the credits roll. This movie is expected. Big jar, I guess, issue or maybe not is this was expected. This movie could have gone the whole violence or violence route, but that would have been repetitive, boring to see. It would have been really expected for Caesar to realize that, hey, this isn't working out. Maybe we should fight quality within each other. And then with Aldo being a goddamn rat, ruining everything, domino effect, it makes Caesar realize that they're all the same. They're no different from one another. That creates peace, but it's all expected. I don't know. That's like the big jarring issue. All of it was expected, so it kind of made it meandering, kind of boring to watch, but it wasn't bad. It wasn't as boring as Beneath, but it's just, I don't know. Again, they tried and the only thing that they would have added is the whole general Aldo stuff, and that's really it. And you know damn well they were not gonna do a big battle. Again, budget is just, in time, is not on their side at all. So in the supposed final chapter of the Planet of the Apes franchise, Battle of the Planet of the Apes ended in a way that was affected and decent, and just over okay. Back in 1973, we're expecting this huge battle back in the day. I get it if you don't like this movie for not having this big battle between humans and ape, because it does say battle. I'm assuming you would think that they would have this large battle, but because again, time and budget, they're just not gonna do that. I could see if people have this like down low on their list in terms of rankings because it's not really a battle at all. I went in being like, yeah, if the budgets are the same as the previous ones, it's not gonna be no big ass battle, no chance, but it's okay. So those were the sequels of the original Planet of the Apes, the first, I guess, timeline. It wasn't as bad as I would expect it to be because in terms of consistency, it was consistent in the whole enslaving theme and okay to good. None of these sequels were awful at all, nor great. It just kept being consistent being like, okay, clearly they're milking this franchise coming out one year apart. Most of them are around the 90 minute mark. So when you have those two aspects, I was just kind of expecting that the sequels to go downhill and it didn't go that route. It was actually okay. My fear was clearly escape because it's just a lot of fun, not talking and fear of the government the worst one or it's not really a, like a bad one but like the one that i like the least is beneath us i fell asleep to it it was boring as heck all right and then conquest and battle are around the same they're okay there's no need for this to be a franchise at all but i'm assuming that's the first one was so successful like, you know what we're gonna melt this franchise a former sequel i mean this is me assuming but i'm pretty sure by the time it got a battle most people were tired of this franchise getting one one a year for four years straight probably isn't you know the best granted the mcu you know has like four movies coming out this year so i don't know climate was probably different way back in the day but yeah these sequels not as bad as i would expect them to be they're all right so that's it for me this has been the road so far thank you